welcome back to the Curious Shelf. And yes, you are joining me on a cold, drizzly day in Brussels. Um, thank you for joining me today and Happy New Year if you haven't seen my video from this week, earlier this week. Um, so yes, so I have been wanting to do this deck review for some time, but with Vlogmas and just, you know, with the way the schedule was working out, um, the earliest I thought was going to be this weekend. And then you're going to have to forgive me for my attire um, and my voice I think is slightly broken today because I had my booster shot yesterday and it has knocked me for six. But I really, really wanted to do this review. So, um, you know, I just thought, okay, let's just do the best I can basically. And the reason is, is that when I actually work with the deck, it's a lot of it is fresh in my mind. And then the longer I wait, the more I kind of like forget kind of like a lot of stuff. Um, and even though I make notes and I have a journal and so forth, it's just not the same. So um, yeah, I just really wanted to do this review. So thank you for joining me today. Um, so basically the deck that I'm going to be talking about is my December deck and that was The Animal Totem Tarot by Lisa Robertson, art by Eugene Smith. Now this retails for 30 US dollars, which is around the 25 euro mark. Um, I, it's a mass market deck. I think I bought it from Book Depository. I can't remember, Book Depository or, or Amazon. Um, it's, it's a deck from 2016, so it's been around for some time. It's one of the older, like slightly older decks now. Um, and it is a Llewellyn deck, so it's a Llewellyn box deck. So yes, you get one of these large boxes with the magnetic closure and, and, and you know, the large um, packaging inside. Um, so yeah, so basically I picked this up and the reason why I wanted to work with the Animal Totem Tarot was because since, you know, for, for a while we've got so many animal decks out in the market, right? We've got so many indie decks and mass market decks and they're becoming increasingly popular. And I love animal decks, but I don't want, I don't want my whole shelf to be covered by them. I, I want to be able to just have a few pieces that are right for me. And the reason why I decided to buy this was because um, I wanted to try a mass market option, A, and B, um, whenever I heard people talk about animal decks and those who are enthusiastic about the, those kind of decks, some of them really came back to this particular deck saying that they really loved it. And that gave me a clue that of course, you know, it might be holding some kind of a classic territory, I don't know. So I picked it up. Now, um, when I first got the deck, I have to say, so it was the 1st of December and I was in two minds. I was thinking about doing another deck as well. And, um, and then I went with this one. And I, when I first opened the box, I have to say my energy just went Poof. I wasn't sure if it was gonna be for me. And, um, and so, yeah, it was a bit of a strange moment actually on the 1st of December. Now these are the backs, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, they're not reversible you can see the animals are a little bit different here and there um i've edged mine in blue and um these are the images the artwork by eugene smith is absolutely gorgeous i cannot fault it it is just lovely um but um you know it's not but sorry but uh the, the 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 most important thing that I found that I really liked was the fact that the animals were in their natural habitat and landscape. And then sometimes, like for this one, you know, this is a page of swords. You do have a sword there. But for example, with the chariot, well, that doesn't apply there. But you know, most of the time you do have um, the symbols there. With the pentacles, you'll see there that they're kind of like outlined in the building. I really like the fact that sometimes it's just wildlife and sometimes we do have the human interaction with wildlife, which is what this is. This is about um, this animal, I can't remember what it exactly is, being culled, which I thought was a bit kind of like, whoa. Um, but you know, it just shows that it's not just wildlife oriented, but farmyard animals are in here, city animals are in here. And this was one of my favorite cards. Actually, this was one of the first cards I pulled in early December. And it was like, whoa, you know, that's Ten of Swords, that pigeon. But, um, and of course it's set in Paris, you know, so it had this European feel to it. And um, I was just blown away by how much um, the, the deck had a versatility to it. It had the broad range. Um, it has some very, very, um, harsh images, images that some people might find a bit tough. I love it, this is death, you know, vulture with, you know, with the carcass. Oh, just look at that. Enough that, of course, is another bird. It might even be another vulture. 
absolutely amazing. You can really see also that kind of like prehistoric side of that bird coming through here. And I, I really, really, um, you know, I applaud the artist actually, especially for bringing that through. Um, so yeah, I, I really thought it was well done, well executed. Um, and I then had to question, now does this translate though into a tarot deck though? Because ultimately I do need to use it for tarot, right? So um, this is where it gets really, really interesting and that is the guidebook. The guidebook um, is like one of those Llewellyn guidebooks. You know, you will get kind of like a full page, a full page um, black and white picture, which personally I don't think it is necessary, but you do. Um, or I personally would have preferred by now for them to have changed this into color, but there you go. But then you get kind of like, you get a paragraph, which is a message from the animal. Then you get a more um, information about the animal. And then finally you get business and career, family and relationships, and you get health and well-being. And then you get card of the day journal prompts. And I have to say that that was one of the most impressive parts of the guidebook because Lisa Robertson um, really works on taking the animal um, and really extracting from it why she chose that animal for that particular card. So if it's the King of Cups and it's a beaver, um, she will talk about how a beaver works to build the dam, why it, how it changes the landscape around it, how it has an influence on the water. Uh, of course, we're talking about cups. Um, it talk, she talks about the fact that, you know, that. Um, how beavers kind of like um, work very, very hard. They, they have this kind of like service um, component to them, you know, really being of service to the land and the wild and the ecosystem around them. And so, you know, um, she really weaves in the nature of the animal into the meaning of the card, which um, I think is not an easy job, to be quite honest with you. Um, I don't think it's as easy as one might think, you know, um, you know, for example, with the Four of Cups, if I read it out, the, the, the message from the octopus, that's what we get. Or maybe I'll just pick a card, actually. Let's pick the next one. That'll be better. Okay, so we have the Tower here. Gorgeous card. So let's look at the Tower and see what her message is because I really think it's worth giving everyone a sample. This is the message from the Termites. That's what we have here for the Tower card. It says, nothing in, what, in this world was ever meant to last nor was it ever meant to be created instantly. Step by step, piece by piece, is how we create the wonders that are our homes. Slowly but surely, we create something that is beneficial to all involved. Yet we understand the importance of all that comes from this harsh physical landscape. But just because something won't last doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. For really, all we, have ever, all we ever have is the experience of the journey, not what our ego wants to leave behind. So yeah, I just think that's so well written. I think um, I think she really put effort into creating it. The one thing that I will say about this, this deck though, um, is I think specifically this deck is really, really helpful if you're doing that kind of like inner journeying work. Um, I've said this so many times on this channel, I'm a bit exhausted about it now. I don't call it shadow work because I think that really has become some kind of a brand. And I believe inner work is not always about shadow. Um, I believe that there are so many layers when we go um, psych in terms of psychological um, analysis within us. And it is not all dark. Some of it is actually quite good. Some of it is quite healthy grounds that we find within ourselves. And so calling it the shadow for me is very, very misleading. It's a very, it's a great buzzword. Basically, you know, if I want to promote something, I'll call it shadow work. But apart from that, it's like, okay, and what? So um, I personally think that this is a really good inner journeying tool. Um, and I think that the the prompts are, are very, very helpful. For example, with the King of Swords. Or let me find another one, sorry, again. Okay, let's go for the Ace of Swords. So this is the Panda. And um, let me find here. Now the Ace of Swords is going to be more interesting. Okay, so here we have the Ace of Swords and the Panda. And it says, you know, um, let me let me pull that card up for you again here. It says, um, sometimes in order for a moment of clarity to hit, you have to, to you have to go do something else, like eat. It is not always about clearing one's mind as much as about distracting it from 
what it was you were trying to think about. Food is a great distraction from your thoughts. It moves your mind from thinking to just being open and available. This is also called grounding the energy so it is more focused. On that note, what's for lunch? <laughs> That's the message from the panda. Um, and then, you know, it goes into the, and I'll just give you a taste of the prompt. So I think that might help for this one. And it says, um, it says here, you know, um, where do you need to cut through unnecessary distractions right now? Are you getting the right sort of information for the decisions you need to make? How do you stay focused and keep your mind sharp? And, you know, I think that is like, you know, just, you know, you don't have to do every single one of these prompts if you pull a card. You might just have one prompt that you're drawn to and it's a good way just to journal and think, actually, this is, this is quite interesting. Am I currently getting distracted? And is my mind just jumping from one thing to another? And maybe it's not always eating, but maybe I can go take a walk or, you know, I can just take a nap or maybe I can just, I don't know, clean up a little bit, a shelf or something. And that distracts me from thinking, thinking, thinking. But, you know, it's just, it's a good way for um, me to see the same Ace of Swords, but in a different way, rather than Ace of Swords always being um, new thinking and new projects and all this kind of stuff. So, um, you know, it's just, it's a great deck. Let me just pull cards up again. It's a great deck. And um, I'm really glad that I spent December with it. Um, December was a bit of a strange month. You saw me do Vlogmas and I was really using the Light Seers a lot that month. Um, it was my deck for Vloggers in the end. But this deck has some beautiful, um, mom I had beautiful kind of like personal moments with it as well, you know, and I do a lot of personal tarot work, which I personally prefer rather than always just posting things to be quite honest with you. So yeah, it was, it was a great deck for me to um, sit with. Um, I think it's a great all year round deck. You have images from winter, you have images from the summer and spring and autumn and all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's not a deck that you just have to put towards one season. Um, and as a mass market option for tarot, I think it's wonderful. I, I think it's a bit of a gem. Um, you know, I'm still interested in getting maybe an indie um, animal deck this year. But I want to think about it before I hit the buy button. Um, and that's because I, I, I normally do have some time before I build up and, and I go and check many reviews. I even ask some of the other tarot tubers, you know, are you still using that deck? I go back and ask people, are you still using it? Do you still have it? Sometimes people go, no, I've moved it on. It wasn't for me. And it just shows how much a deck can change from the initial unwrapping and um, unveiling and unboxing and all of that stuff to like and then how was it when you worked with it and so you know I will be having also moments this year where I'm going to go back and look at the decks from 2021 and ask myself which ones really mean something to me still today and which ones um, I am going to be letting go of but I'm not somebody that does massive clear outs and massive declutterings and all that kind of stuff I just, the, the, the apartment's really tiny to be quite honest with you and I don't have a, a loft area and I don't have a cellar area um, that's viable to put kind of like you know um, stuff like this so I have to really think about something that I bring in because it's going to take up a lot of space basically so yeah so um, you know I'm, I'm still glad though that I got this deck actually and it satisfied the need for me to work with an animal deck uh, I think a little um, and I'll see how I go forward in terms of you know another deck to explore um, I might even try an animal oracle deck next, I don't know. But um, it's not something that I have planned very soon because I have other decks that I wanna work with in um, uh, for the winter and for summer. So, um, spring, sorry. So yeah, I'm not kind of like rushing to go and make another purchase soon, to be quite honest with you in this area. So yeah, it's, it's just been really, really, um, look at that, <laughs> passed out there. But, um, the type of guinea pig, I think. Um, so yeah, so just, you know, I think it's just so beautifully done. I mean, look at that contentness, you know, with that butterfly right at the top. So um, this was a really good deck for me in terms of just personally feeling comforted a little bit because um, yeah, the last few months haven't been easy. But you know, that's the thing about a lot of the Llewellyn decks. I think that they have that ability to bond um, I find it personally 
And I think that for my side, what I realized is I have to put in the work as well. These are not decks that are just naturally going to be, you know, yes, we bond. These are decks that just, you know, I have to sit there and prompt. Well, I don't have to do anything, but you know what I mean? Like, I do need to do the journaling and the thinking and the questioning in order for me to bond with a deck. And if I don't do that, for me, a lot of the decks, just they, they'll just sit there a bit useless, to be quite honest with you. Um, if I use them for reading, it's a different matter. Um, this deck, sometimes I think I would find difficult when reading with another person because of the fact that I'm not sure if I'm going to get the meaning of that card straight away in a whole layout. It's something I need to experiment with. Um, so yeah, that's a good question for me actually. And and I'm not sure, again, basically, if, if it is going to work well when it comes to readings for others. Perhaps it does. Um, but I definitely recommend it for inner journey work. It's been beautiful in that sense. So here we go. Um, I'm just going to check my notes quickly just to see if I've forgotten anything before... Um, I end this review. Um, it is kind of like you know, uh, it's been it's, it's been a, it's been a twenty four hours where I am completely, completely not for six, you know, and I'm not sure if tomorrow's go I'm going to be that much better. To be quite honest with you, so I'm glad I did this video actually. Um, I've spoken about um, most things, I think, you know, and um, yeah, I, I I think this is a deck where. Um, if you're not sure about animal decks and you want something in a price range where you don't want to go indie, this is of course near the 30 US dollar mark, which for some is going to be very high, but still I think that um you get a lot for that. And you know, and it is by the way, before I forget, standard Llewellyn cardstock. Actually, it's a it's slightly more cardboardy than the more recent like Forest of Enchantment and um the Dark Wood and uh the Green Witch and Everyday Witch, all of those I think are slightly more glossier. This one I found a little bit more cardboardy, and I actually prefer the more recent ones, to be quite honest with you. So I don't think the cardstock is, yeah, it's Llewellyn cardstock. So, you know, you, you know what you're getting if you know Llewellyn cardstock. It's not exactly sometimes the best, you know, that's, that's, that's what I'm going to say. But I like the size of the cards. They're easy um, in terms of uh, if you've got little hands. So, yeah. Lisa Robertson, by the way, just before I, um, just as I remember, she did the Mermaid Tarot. She has the Tarot de Cirque or something like this, the Circus Tarot that's, come, that's recently come out, like just before Christmas. She also has a new Cat Tarot that's coming out. I think it's February. Um, mass Market, again, a Lua, I think it's going to be a Llewellyn box deck, basically. So just be on the lookout for that. That If you like Lisa Robertson, um, she has a new deck coming soon through. I think it is Lisa Robertson in February. Um, and as I mentioned, it's a cat deck. And I have kept my eye on that. I already saw it last year in the spring. I mean, that's how far ahead I saw it. And I was like, ooh, this is interesting. So I have had my eye on that deck for one year. And I am really, really interested. I think it's more of a sepia-toned, black and white cat deck. But I can't, I don't know, I haven't seen enough images. I've only seen a few, but just so you're aware. Um, and I can't recall what it was called, but yeah. So thank you for joining me this evening and I will see you all soon and take care now, bye.